It is a few seconds to midnight. As the clock ticked towards midnight on 9th October 1962, the black, yellow and red colored flag was hoisted for the first time to usher in a new dawn of an independent Uganda. British colonial rule had finally come to an end, unfolding emotionally and joyfully before the hundreds gathered at the Kololo ceremonial grounds. Uganda was a very lucky country in a way because it was never a colony. Uganda was a protectorate from 1894. So the way the Wazungu who colonized us handled Uganda was different from how it handled other colonies. First of all, uh, they did not have, the colonialists did not have intention of staying in Uganda and uh, establishing large plantations. Independence was a negotiated transition. It was not that it was given us to us on the table, no. Uh, the Milton Abortes, indeed the, the Sir Edwards, uh, uh, and uh, indeed um, Ben Chiwanuka, and all the other identity leaders from Teso, from uh, Karamoja to Acholi, to Bunyoro, to all the identity communities in Uganda were absolutely substantially involved in the case for independence. The willingness by the British to hand over to the Ugandans ironically spelled doom for political parties that had been founded on shaky grounds. The parties started on wrong footing because they started on a narrow, a narrow ideology, especially the ideology of religion. Say that me, I'm a Catholic, therefore I belong to this party. Me, I'm a Protestant, therefore I belong to this party. That was a wrong ideology in the first place. Rather than really looking at human rights issues like service delivery, like uh, roads, like uh, access to education, people are consider, co considering very, very narrow perspectives. A similar view is held by Henry Chamber, who is in his 80s, but vividly remembers the unfolding of Uganda's self-governance at the time he was on his way out of Makere University. It was actually part of the administration that was taking over from the colonial government, having come from Makerere in 1962. Much as I was a youth, I was certainly enjoying the atmosphere that was certainly completely new. Rising through the ranks of civil service, Chamber went on to serve up to the position of a permanent secretary principal private secretary to the Prime Minister Milton Obote and a minister in the E.D. Amin government. The parties uh, that were based in Uganda were directed mainly at taking charge of the country after the, after the, after the Europeans left. Who was going to be in charge? How, how is it going to be managed? And that is where you found many of our politi politicians bracing themselves to see how can we organize ourselves to take responsibility. However, this view is contested by older members of the Uganda People's Congress, the second oldest political vehicle in Uganda, founded in 1960, four years after the establishment of the Democratic Party. UPC was genuinely founded as a nationalist movement, rooted starting with Buganda. You know, the nonsense that's the Northern and Eastern Party does not apply because it was started at first founded as a movement way back in 1930, 40s, leading to 1952 when it was founded as the oldest political party today. It was founded to deal with the grievances of Ugandans' majority citizens against the domination by the British. That's the Uganda Post Congress. Both parties are in existence today, albeit with reduced political influence. Jimmy Akena, the son of the founding father of UPC, is now the embattled president of the same political party who also serves as the member of parliament for Lira Municipality. He argues that the party was driven by a clear-headed agenda of liberation from colonial rule. The idea of self-government now, so that was a key pillar which galvanized in that they were pushing for the self-government that we should take control of our own destiny. But also another element of UPC was how to expand the services, the key services, health, education, and of course incomes, which we did mainly through the cooperatives. So those are questions which I still believe are relevant today and need to be addressed. Not their foundation initially. Their foundation of service delivery, UPC, 
came with their access to power. Once Milton Obote achieved the power in 1962, he focused on service delivery. But that wasn't his main point of rallying the population in, uh, from 1959 up to 1962. His was to maneuver to see how he could actually gain power, which he actually successfully gained by allying with Kawaka Yeka. Had Uganda National Congress been in existence to date, it would have been the oldest political party from which UPC was later birthed as a splinter group led by Milton Obote. Singing of a national anthem and the display of a coat of arms. Our independence shall mean great responsibilities for all of us without exception. Both the pioneer political parties have become a shadow of their past and they are now in different forms of alliance with the ruling national resistance movement. UPC agreed to cooperate with the NRM in 2016 and Akena's wife Betty Amongi, also a UPC MP, was made a member of the NRM cabinet. The DP president Norbert Mao signed an agreement with the NRM this year that led to his appointment to the position of the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, while the party secretary general, Gerard Siranda, has since been elected to the East African Legislative Assembly with NRM support. Some of the parties uh, are there in name, like UPC, like DP, they now exist in name. Because first of all, UPC has become a regional party. It only puts candidates for elections only in Lango. You cannot have a party which only wins elections in Lango. And as far as we are concerned, UPC wins in Lango because NRM allows them and sometimes facilitates them because after all, they are, uh, as the president has said, they are not an enemy. The political pundits unanimously agree that the harsh political environment decimated the influence of the political parties. When we were overthrown, we became a victim. We were blamed for everything and then we had 20 years where political parties could not operate. Now, coming out of that one and from the background where we're coming from, it is actually quite credible that UPC still has representation. UPC still has a following. This is not the same with all independence parties across Africa. Professor Makara argues that NRM has managed to hold on for half the period Uganda has been independent by being an open party to all faiths and tribes. DP yellow. yellow, UPC yellow, yellow. Jema yellow. yellow. The Democratic Party originally had roots in the Catholic faith. Kabaka Yeka, which had roots in the Buganda Kingdom, was also grounded in the Anglican faith, just like UPC with which they formed an alliance to edge out DP in the 1962 elections. It is argued in some quarters that the UPC and Kawaka KY Alliance was facilitated by the British behind the, behind the scenes so that the Catholic does not become the Prime Minister and eventually President of Uganda. They thought, the British seems to have thought that if the Catholic took over, then the power alignment would favor the French and the Italians who are largely Catholic. Scholars and political pundits are skeptical that the political parties in existence today, including the National Resistance Movement Party, will stay on for several years to come. This for lack of a proper ideology, a case cited for the Democratic Party and Uganda's People's Congress, which are said to have started on a foot of sectarianism and ethnicity. Jackson Onyango, reporting for NTV.